So the banks and fintechs can come together uh, uh, for specific use cases such as line of credit or mm -hmm. revenue-based finance, uh, instant settlement products such as uh, PG-based, payment gateway-based instant settlement or the mm -hmm. cash on delivery-based uh, instant settlement. Right. right. So these uh, requires a good visibility into the business performance mm -hmm. on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. Right. So and uh, that's where a platform plays a crucial role. Welcome back to the Digital Banking Behind the Scenes video series. I'm Dipali Lalwani and we're still in conversation with Sandeep Namriyar, Vice President and Business Head for Lending at Open Financial Technologies. We're in episode two of our conversation on alternative lending. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the alternative data pipeline, its underlying infrastructure, and the impact that it's having on the risk assessment models in the industry. Welcome back, Sandeep. Thank you. Uh, Sandeep, in the first episode, you spoke to us about how alternative data is reshaping origination, cost, and distribution in lending. Can we take a step back from that? And can we explain what are the kinds of data points that get covered under alternative data? And if we take the example, say, of a D2C business, what are the kind of data points that we would see? Right. So alternative data use cases are primarily about the contextual awareness and also faster decision making, right? Mm -hmm. So especially in terms of lending uh, scenario. Say if you are a digital lender, the awareness of multiple financial relationship, the investment profile, the income and expenses, especially mm -hmm. uh, the payment pattern, the mobile recharge, the uh, utility bill payments and repayment pattern uh, when it comes to the credit uh, from formal uh, financial institution as well as from the business counterparts or the vendor payments, right? So, etc. I mean, all these, uh, you know, data points will give a better insights about a prospective uh, loan applicant, a prospective loan applicant, right? So, in the context of a business which is running multi-channel distribution, as you mentioned, the D2C businesses, right? Mm. So, integrating the data sources or the channels which can give visibility in terms of their spend and revenue mm -hmm. uh, can give a holistic understanding of their business and its uh, growth prospects. In general, any data that can be used to enhance lending decisions uh, and is not included in the uh, credit databases of the credit uh, reporting agencies, mm -hmm. right, uh, like, such as TransUnion, Experian, etc., can be regarded as alternative data. Right, right. Um, so, as you, as you mentioned, it's a fairly diverse set of data. So right, data right. From what I understand, what all can be included is still an evolving uh, thing. Uh, also, from what I understand, the sources of alternative data can be public or private. So, how trustworthy, uh, you know, are these sources? And from a bank's perspective, how easy or difficult is it for them to partner with the providers of such alternative data? Right. That's an interesting question because see, uh, the thing is that data can be publicly available, right? Mm -hmm. So, and uh, there are vendors in the value added services space, mm -hmm. uh, which enables a digital lender to fetch these data through APIs, etc. But impo uh, more importantly, what we'll have to consider here is that it has to be based on the consumer consent or customer consent, mm -hmm. right? For example, fetching the sales data from an e-commerce platform Right, so the distribution platform or the logistics uh, partners end, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the GSTN, right? So GST data, mm -hmm. account aggregator, utility payments, etc. So everything has to be based on the customer consent, which mm -hmm. actually uh, is important from two perspective. Mm -hmm. One is from an authenticity uh, of the data, mm -hmm. right? Second is from a privacy uh, norms perspective. So it has to be compliant mm -hmm. with the privacy norms as of that particular country. For example, GDPR, mm -hmm. uh, etc. Right, right, right. So basically what I'm understanding is that <coughs> this is an area where banks can best work by partnering with fintechs that are leveraging the regional infrastructure for con consent and data right. aggregation right. as you explained. Now, uh, how is this data impacting <coughs> the bank's traditional risk assessment models? And uh, can you share a few examples in terms of how banks are exploring partnerships with fintechs, uh, you know, in terms of um, looking at adopting alternative risk assessment models. Right. 
So when it comes to uh, alternative data, so I'm not just just referring to the social media data or the mobile data, right? Mm -hmm. So, but the data which uh, that can give visibility into the financial health of a business, mm -hmm. right? As, especially when it comes to an SMB uh, related uh, lending. Mm -hmm. So this is something that is highly valuable for a bank in terms of underwriting and also in terms of credit monitoring, mm -hmm. right? So the banks and fintechs can come together uh, uh, for specific use cases such as line of credit or revenue-based finance, uh, instant settlement products such as uh, PG-based, payment gateway-based instant settlement or the mm. cash on delivery-based uh, instant settlement. Right. right. So these uh, requires a good visibility into the business performance mm. on an ongoing basis. Mm. Right. So and uh, that's where a platform plays a crucial role. Right. So cross-analyzing mm. these data coming from multiple uh, data sources. Mm. Right. Uh, to establish the authenticity, example by cross-analyzing data from logistics mm. uh, and the sales, can remove the return to origin. Mm. Uh, you know how much uh, you know is getting uh, returned mm. to back to the seller. Mm -hmm. That can be uh, you know netted, yeah. and uh, uh, GST and banking, uh, right? Cross-analyzing GST and banking can also give an actual picture of the uh, re realized revenue, mm. right? So I believe this is an area where both banks and fintechs can complement and effectively collaborate. Wow. Um, thanks so much, Sandeep, for your insights into uh, what is truly a very fundamental piece of the alternative lending infrastructure. And to highlight a point that you just made, you know, the role of platforms, uh, especially in terms of driving aggregation and authenticity of right. uh, the alternative data pi pipeline. I think this is going to be a fairly important space to watch for all of us. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for viewing this. Uh, we hope you found this useful. Please do like and share uh, this episode. We will be back uh, for the final episode of our conversation on alternative lending. And in that, we'll be covering a use case that has especially D2C and SaaS businesses globally really excited. I'm talking about revenue-based financing. Please do subscribe to our channel to know when that's out. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye.